Hi, my name is Justin Shelf, and I'm the founder here at Patch My PC. In this video, we're excited to announce the first public preview of our Win32 application feature for Microsoft Intune. In this video, we're going to review how to get started if you want to opt in to the public preview. The first thing you want to do is go to our website, download in Docs, and download the latest publishing service MSI from our website. We'll go ahead and launch that and just use the standard installations for this MSI. So we'll just do all the defaults here. And then we'll launch the service. Now, uh, this is available in preview mode. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is come over to the about tab, install preview builds and choose update now and apply the settings. This is going to opt you in and download and install the latest preview build that's going to support Microsoft Intune. So now we can see that we have the preview build running. Uh, the first thing that you want to do if you want to enable Intune integration is that's actually done in the advanced tab. So we're going to go ahead and choose to enable Intune integration. What we're going to see is we're going to get a new tab called Intune Preview. So we can see that that just came in once we enable that in the advanced tab. Now, if you're only using the Intune functionality and you want to get rid of the updates and applications feature for Configuration Manager, we do have the ability to automatically hide those tabs if you want a little bit more of a cleaner look, only showing the Intune Preview piece. Now, there are a few prerequisites that we need in order to get access to your Intune tenant for the functionality of creating applications. So what we would want to do is go to Azure Active Directory. Um, so we're already in there with a global admin, and we need to create a new registration for an application. We'll just call it Patch My PC. You can name this whatever you want, and then choose Register. Next, we need to grant the appropriate permission. So we're going to click View API Permissions. And then we're going to click on add permission. We want to use the Microsoft graph for the permissions. So that's going to be what allows us to integrate into Intune using the graph API. And then we're going to choose on application permissions. And we want to grant it permissions to the device management app. So we need read and write permissions in order to read apps and create apps within Microsoft Intune. We'll go ahead and click add. And that's going to take a couple uh, minutes for this new grant option to show up and be clickable before we can actually give consent. So we'll pause the video and wait for this to become available. Okay, so we waited a few minutes. Let's go ahead and try to click grant here and choose our login with the global admin. And we can see that we're going to give it permissions to that graph API and click accept. And then that should go ahead and grant the access. Now, uh, next, what we need to do is uh, copy the application ID. So let's come back over here and click on overview. And then we're going to copy that client application ID. So that's going to be what we use within Patch My PC. Now we also need to create what's called a secret key. So we'll come over here to the uh, certificates and secrets, and we're going to click on a new client secret. And I'm going to make it not expire ever, um, but you can make that whichever makes sense for your environment. If it does expire, you will need to generate a new key and then update that within our publishing tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. And we can see that we have the ability to copy that key uh, that was created for the secret key. Uh, now that's all we need to do uh, within the Azure AD piece in order to grant our application permissions. So what we need to do next is go ahead and copy and paste the application ID as well as that secret key that we generated. And then lastly, we do need to give it the authority URL. The authority URL is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash login dot windows dot net. And then it's going to be your tenant domain. So in our case, it's patchmypc.com is the domain tenant that we've validated. This could be if you're using a trial, for example, this could be the dot on microsoft.com domain. Or if you validated your domain, this could be whatever the uh, domain is for your tenant that's been validated. We can then go ahead and click test connection to validate that we can connect. Now there are a few additional options. So we do have the capability to digitally sign the detection method PowerShell script. Now, one thing to note in the current previews, this will only work based on the WSUS signing certificate that you're using. So you would need to have a WSUS signing cert installed uh, within WSUS in order to use this functionality in the current preview. So by default, uh, digitally sign would not be enabled. But if you do have a WSUS cert imported, you can enable that so that you can code sign the PowerShell detection method script for the Win32 applications. Secondly, we have the ability when a new version of an application is uh, released and we publish it to Intune, 
we can copy the assignments from any previously created application within our service. So that will make sure that the new version is automatically being deployed based on the previous assignments of that application. We do also have the option to delete the assignments for the previously created app. So if you wanna make sure that you're only deploying the latest version when it's published, we can delete the old versions of those previous apps. And then the final option is if you wanna automatically delete the Win32 applications that were previously created that are now out of date, you do have the ability to auto delete them and only have the latest one if you want. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and enable Google Chrome for publishing. So we're just gonna go out, search for Google within the tree view list and then enable that product. Now we still have all those custom options that you may be familiar with if you've been using our product for SECM applications. So for example, we can close the process, we can delete shortcuts, we can disable updates, and we can even do a lot of custom things around your own pre or post script. So for example, I'm gonna add a, a post action script that sets the Google Chrome homepage. So all the flexibility that you'll be accustomed to would also apply for our Intune applications as well. So we'll also enable logging for Google Chrome's MSI installer. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and enable 7-Zip as well. So we'll do the 64-bit MSI and then choose apply. Uh, now we do still have all the same alerting. So you can get alerts via emails or Teams notifications whenever new Intune applications are automatically created. We of course have our sync schedule. That's how often you wanna sync and publish new apps to Intune. Uh, and we'll go ahead and trigger that first synchronization just to get this process started in the background to create these apps. And then we'll show you what that's gonna look like within the Intune console. So jumping over, we can see that we don't currently have any applications created. So we'll see here in a few minutes that we start getting that 7-Zip and Chrome app created. So we can see we're currently in the process of uploading the Intune application. So we probably already have the app created. If I do a quick refresh, we can see that we now have Google Chrome. Um, but if we click on it, the, it doesn't look like the content is quite uploaded yet. So there we go, the upload just completed, and we should see a commit happen here in a couple seconds. And then once we refresh then, we'll now at the point where this app could be ready to get deployed. So we can see the file was now com uh, committed into Azure. And now if we refresh, we can see we're ready to assign the app. And we also got that Teams alert letting us know that the application was created within Intune. So now that's created, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to a group and we're gonna make it available to all enrolled devices and we're gonna make it available to everybody. So we'll go ahead and choose okay on that. Okay, and we're gonna save that assignment. Okay, so jumping back, let's go back to our applications. There we go. And we should see that 7-Zip also looks like we just got the Teams alert that 7-Zip was also created as an Intune app. So we can now see that 7-Zip is also created and available within our tool. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change the URL out, and we're gonna point to a more updated catalog just to simulate what it will look like when a Google Chrome update is available and published. Okay, so we've swapped out the URL just to simulate an update. I'm gonna go ahead and synchronize our service, and what we're gonna see is we're gonna start to create a new Google Chrome update. So if we look at the current version, we can see that it's version 77, and the latest one should be 79 um, something. So what we'll see is that we detected that we did uh, find an older version in Intune, and we detected it needed an update. So we can see that's updating the current app. Um, so at that point, we're gonna see it uh, create the application, and now it's currently starting to do the upload. Now, what we're gonna notice is that during this update period, we might see a moment when there's two different applications created. So we have the old app and we have the new app. Now, once we commit the file for version 79, we're also gonna see that we duplicate the assignment from the previous version. And then we should see that we also delete the assignment for that previous 77 version to make sure that when updates are available, we automatically deploy the new one. And then we remove the assignment from the one that is now out of date, depending on how you want that option configured. So that's the default configuration. Of course, if you don't wanna copy assignments, you maybe wanna go through more testing, you do have the ability to not auto assign and that works perfectly fine as well. So let's go ahead and refresh here. And now we can see that the 79 version of Google Chrome is now assigned and the version 77 is now unassigned. So if we click in here and look at the assignments, 
we can see that this is going out to the all users, just like the previous one was that we assigned. Um, so that's the preview. Uh, we are looking for feedback. This is still really early, and we're looking to improve this based on your thoughts. Thank you for watching.